Okay, hello. Um, we are talking about global wind belts today. Uh, so, let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so, we know that the equator, or zero degrees latitude, um, on the Earth gets the most sunlight all the time. So that's going to make the air there warm. So the air at the equator is going to rise, because warm air rises. So it's going to go from the surface of the Earth here, out, up, into the troposphere. Okay. Once it hits the top of the troposphere, it's going to kind of split, and it's going to start traveling either direction. We know that the temperature at the top of the troposphere is cold, so that air is going to cool down as it travels along the top of the troposphere. And then cool air sinks. All the little air molecules clump together and condense, and they sink. So this is going to create an area of high pressure because you have all the little air molecules pushing down on one point. Just like when all the air rises, it's going to create a low pressure because all the air molecules are leaving this area. Okay. And it's going to hit the surface of the Earth, and it's going to diverge again. Diverge. All right. As the air travels along the surface of the Earth, we know that Earth acts like a heating source. It's radiating heat out. And so that air is going to warm up as it travels along the surface of the Earth. As it gets warmer, it's going to start to rise. It's start to rise. Hot, warm air rises. So that's going to create a little area of low pressure again because all the air molecules are leaving and lightening the air pressure in the area. And then it will travel along the top of the troposphere. And since it's way up away from the heating source that is the Earth's surface, it will start to cool down as it travels across. And then it will think again, travel across the troposphere, cool down, and think. Again, creating an area of high pressure because those air molecules are pushing down the surface of the Earth and start to travel that way. And travel along the surface of the Earth and heat up a little bit. Okay. So this is what's happening from the surface of the Earth all the way up to the top of the troposphere. We have convection cells of heating and cooling. So these convection cells um, have names um, at from 0 to 30 degrees. These are called Hadley cells. From 30 to 60 on both hemispheres, they're called feral cells. And then the cells at the poles are called the polar cells. Somebody got real creative with naming there. Okay. So that's what's happening from our feet way to up above our heads. So now we can look and see how this plays into creating surface winds for us. So we'll start up here at the North Pole. So we can see that the winds are traveling in a southern direction um, from this polar cell. So our winds are going to start off traveling in a southern direction. Um, however, because the Earth is spinning underneath the winds, we have the Coriolis effect. So it's going to appear that these winds are deflected. In the northern hemisphere, it's going to look like they're deflected to the right of their point of origin. So we're going to face the same direction as the arrow is facing, right? So the arrow is looking down this way. So as it's traveling down south, it's going to deflect to the right, which is that direction for us. Okay. And this 
Then we're going to do the same thing here between 30 degrees north and 60 degrees north. We see that the winds are traveling in a northern pattern to start with. Okay. So we're going to turn and face the same direction as the winds and figure out, so because of the Coriolis effect, they're going to deflect to the right in the northern hemisphere. And then from 30 degrees north to zero degrees south, um, the winds are traveling in a southern direction. So we're going to again turn to face the same direction as the winds and figure out what the Coriolis effect, which way they're deflected, to the right in the northern hemisphere. This way. All right, so take a second here, pause the video, and try to figure out the southern hemisphere on your own, and then come back to us when you are ready to check your work. I'm going to work with you while you work, but without talking. So we do have to remember, in the southern hemisphere, the Coriolis effect makes things deflect to the left. All right, so make sure that your wind belts look like this. So now we're going to name these wind belts, or go over what their names are. Um, so wind belts are always named uh, winds are always named for the direction that they come from. So, for this, we're going to need a quick reminder. North, south, east, west. Okay, so up here in the North Pole, these winds are coming from the east. So these are polar easterlies. Same thing down here coming from the east, polar easterlies. Right. Um, these winds between 60 degrees north and 30 degrees north are coming from the west, so we call these the westerlies. Same thing down here with 30. Between 30 degrees south and 60 degrees south, these are called the westerlies. Because they come from the west. And then here between 30 degrees and the equator, 30 degrees and the equator, these are coming from the north and east. These are coming from the south and east. So these are the northeast trade winds. And these are the southeast trade winds. Okay, there you have it. This is our globe of wind. So these are global prevailing winds. Um, we live in North Carolina. Um, we live right around 33, 35-ish. So we live in this wind belt right here with the westerlies. All right, so we have tend to have a lot of high pressure systems near us or just a little bit south of us um, because all the air molecules are pushing down there and our prevailing winds tend to come from the west. So we usually get winds from um, California and also a little bit from the Gulf of Mexico. So our winds are coming from the south of the west. All right, so that's your basics for global prevailing winds. Hope you learned a lot. See you in class.